Hello and welcome back to Not A Watch Snob. I am your host, Bill, and today we have an exclusive sneak peek at the brand new 2021 reissue Waltham Field and Marine. You're definitely not going to want to miss this one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Let's get started. The history of this watch is as follows. Waltham Watch Company was founded in 1850 right here in Massachusetts by a man named Aaron Lukvin Densian. Known for their incredible movements and for creating the precursor to the modern day assembly line, Waltham Watch Company quickly became a household name. Suddenly, a new chapter of history emerged. During World War I, the harsh environment of trench warfare called for an even tougher watch. That's when Charles de Poyer changed the watch world forever with the first ever waterproof, dustproof, field and marine Waltham watch. De Poyer's double clinched bezel and screw down crown made this watch almost as tough as the soldiers carrying them. All waterproof watches and dive watches on the planet today can be traced back to the Waltham Field and Marine. This revolutionary technology paved the way for horology, and today, the Waltham Field and Marine is back with a brand new piece of innovation. Let's check it out. There once was a watch that changed history. And now, it's finally back. This is the Waltham Field and Marine 2021 reissue. The specs of these watches are as follows. We have two great watches to show you from Waltham today. We have the three hand with a beautiful blue dial. That watch is 41 millimeters, stainless steel case, sapphire crystal, a Swiss made Salita SW200 automatic movement, 26 joules, a 38 power reserve, and a very cool, innovative locking crown system as an homage to the original Diployer. The crown is locked firmly against the case with the aid of a bayonet system, while a brass lever shows the status of the crown, locked or unlocked. The next watch they sent us is my absolute favorite. This watch has a 24 hour dial at the six o'clock position and a power reserve indicator at the 12. This watch has all the exact same details except for this watch is a 43mm case, it features a Soprod C115 movement in it, 31 joules, and a 42 hour power reserve. It also features this brand new innovative locking crown system. Each watch is equipped with X1 grade Superluminova and you really can't go wrong with either of these watches. The pros and cons of these watches are as follows. Pro. The dial is absolutely stunning on both watches. It's simple and classy, yet rugged and tough at the same time. I love how the blue on that one dial really pops against the stainless steel, as well as the gray gunmetal dial really gives it that tough, rugged, mutter look. Con. The date window is a little small for my liking on both watches. It's legible, but I find myself squinting more at the blue dial watch than I do with the gray and I just think that I wish that the date window was more outlined and more prominent so that I could actually see what date it is. Pro. This interlocking bezel is extremely cool. It's such a great homage to the original DPOA without completely making an exact clone. I think the brass lever really makes it pop and makes it stand out against other crowns that I've seen. And it's such a prominent feature to the watch that I just think it adds so much style and uniqueness to this watch. Con. The band on the blue watch isn't exactly my favorite, it just seems very flimsy and doesn't seem as high quality as the other band. 
However, this rugged, almost Kevlar band on the gray dial is amazing. It's comfortable, it's rugged, I feel like I could wear this watch anywhere. It's got the undertone of leather, which I really, really like. And I have to give them credit for adding this quick release straps. And it really makes it a game changer for easy accessibility when changing out these bands. Pro. The size of these watches actually hits the sweet spot on my wrist. They're not too big, not too small, but they also have a really great wrist presence. And I think that the 41 and the 43 millimeter are exactly what you're looking for if you want to watch with a lot of presence, but also not too overbearing on the wrist. Pro. I really like the X1 Superluminova. I think that it is absolutely stunning. Each watch really pops with those really unique hands that I don't see on many watches. I think that it is just a really cool look for each watch. Especially the gray dial. The green on that gray dial really pops and you just don't expect it with those almost orangey yellow vintage hands that this watch features. The last one we're going to end on is a Pro. Maybe I'm just being a stickler, but when I twist a threaded crown, the emblem seems to never add up. However, on this watch, when you screw in that crown, the emblem is perfectly aligned with the watch. You can see the W clear as day, and it's not off or crooked at all. I think that they really did a good job by adding this interlocking system that makes the crown stay where it needs to stay. Um, I really think that the crown on this watch is absolutely amazing, and it's definitely a feature that you'll never see on another type of watch. The blue dial watch will run you around $900 USD, and the gray dial watch will run you about $1,420 USD. All in all, they have great movements, great precision, great details, and they're both stunning watches. What I like about these watches is that they didn't just play off the Wealtham name, they actually tried to do something that was both innovative and pays homage to the original Wealtham brand. I think that Aaron Dencion would be very proud of the watches that Wealtham is continuing to make today, and for a reissue, I'm actually pleasantly surprised for the watches that I received. Swiss made, excellent movements, as well as the attention to detail was there. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Remember, my name is Bill, and I'm not a watch snob, and neither are you. Thank you very much. Enjoy.